All right, so today we're going to be talking about linear equations with brackets. So this is a, a new form of linear equation we haven't talked about yet. Let's have a look. Uh, so we're going to start by reviewing a few two-step problems. I know we've been dealing with a lot of two-step pro two problems lately, but then we're going to introduce two new types of linear equation that we'll need to know. Uh, the first one are A and then bracket X plus B equals C type equations. And then the other one is X plus B all over A equals C type equations. Both of these are done very similarly. We'll get into them when we get into them. Let's get going. So let's just review some two-step problems. I want you guys to pause the video right here and give these two questions a shot. I know how silly that is pausing a video and trying some questions, but it's still a good idea. Just pause the video, see if you can get these going, and then we'll go over them in a second. All right, so I'm gonna go over these right now. First things first, we wanna get X all by itself. So on this first one, I'm gonna add nine on both sides. If I add nine on both sides, this gives me 13 X equals negative 91. And then if I divide by 13 on both sides, uh, I'll even show that divide by 13, divide by 13. That's gonna give me X equals negative 91 divided by 13 is negative seven. So for that first one, X would equal negative seven. This next one's got some uh, fractions in it. I know that's pretty much like you guys' least favorite thing, but you know, it is what it is. So it's minus five over four on both sides. And what you're gonna notice is we're gonna have two over five X equals three over eight minus five over four. But we encounter a bit of a problem here. Remember, you can only add or subtract fractions together if they have the same denominator. So in other words, between these two fractions we got here, three over eight and five over four, we have to figure out a common denominator between the two of them. Uh, I think a pretty good common denominator would be eight. You can just get that by multiplying this one by two. So that's gonna give us 10 over eight instead of that five over four. It's the exact same thing. It's just written differently, right? Now that they have the same denominator, you can subtract them just by subtracting the numerator. So we have two over five X all by itself on this side over here. Uh, three over eight minus 10 over eight. Well, three minus 10 is negative seven. So we have negative seven over eight. And then the last step we gotta do here is we have to divide both sides by two over five because this is two over five times X. The, the opposite of multiplication, of course, is division. So we divide by two over five on both sides and that gets rid of that there. Now, we actually have more work to do here, believe it or not. Now we have X equals negative seven over eight divided by two over five. Once you see a fraction with division, you know something funny is gonna happen, right? There's not, there's not really a way we can directly do this. Uh, so when it's a fraction divided by a fraction, we actually have to use that strategy, keep, change, flip. So dividing fractions doesn't work, but we can change it to be X equals negative seven over eight. That's the one we keep. We change to a times and we flip this other one. So it's five over two. Multiplying fractions, I think is everyone's favorite thing to do here because you just multiply straight across. This is gonna equal X equals uh, negative seven times five is negative 35 over eight times two, which is 16. The last thing you always do here is check to see if there's any number that divides both the, the top and the bottom here, because of course that allows us to simplify a fraction. But in this case, I don't think there's any number that divides both 35 or negative 35, I should say, uh, and positive 16. So this is now simplified and we are now good to go on that one. Uh, so hopefully we're able to get those two questions right. If you weren't, that's okay. Just make sure you're identifying where your mistakes are. Uh, and if you need any extra help with this, make sure you're coming back into the Zoom uh, and asking me. All right, here's a word problem. This will be our last little review thing before we introduce our new concept. Uh, you don't have to pause the video here and try this if you don't want to, but if you do, feel free to do so. Uh, but let me read it to you here. Kai has three times as many nickels than dimes. Uh, so we know, you know, his number of nickels three times as many as his number of dimes. Uh, he has a total of $3.75 in just nickels and dimes. Find how many nickels and dimes he has. So these kinds of questions, there's a few layers to this in setting them up. They're, they're, they're really strange. Uh, the first layer is you, of course, need to understand how much each kind of coin is worth, right? So a nickel is worth five cents. So we'll write that as 0.05. Right? Always write it in terms of dollars. You don't write it in, in cents. It just makes things more, more challenging. So a nickel's worth five cents and a dime, of course, is worth 10 cents. So there you go. Uh, now, the other thing we have to kind of straight away here is uh, we have to get an expression or rather a variable representing the amount of each coin. Well, notice we have three times as many nickels 
as the number of dimes? Well, then that means we should probably say that X is going to represent our number of dimes. And the reason I'm picking dimes here is because that's like our base amount. We know we have three times as many nickels than dimes. So dimes is the thing we're comparing everything to. Uh, so that's our number of dimes. If we have three times as many nickels, then that means our number of nickels would be three X. That's three times X, right? So three times X, three times the number of dimes equals the number of nickels. Now, the other thing to come from this question is we have to use the, the variable that we use to represent the number of our coin, as well as the actual value of our coins uh, to make an expression for what the, the total worth of each type of coin is. Here's what I mean by that. It's kind of a very weird way to, to say it, but here, here's a better way of, of putting it. We know a dime is worth 10 cents. That's just one dime, right? We know we have X number dimes. So the total value of our dimes could be represented by 10 cents multiplied by X. So if X was, let's say five dimes, we'd have 10 times or 0 0.10 times five, we'd have 50 cents, right? That'd be the total worth of our dimes. Maybe I'll even write that here. This is the total value of dimes. Now we also have nickels here. So we have to add five cents times the number of nickels we have, which is 3x, right? So this represents the total value of the nickels. So the total value of the dimes, in other words, what all of our dimes that we have, or all of the dimes that Kai has, I should say, uh, added together, plus all of the, uh, the nickels we have added together, so the total value of all our nickels, this combined is going to equal $3.75. So what we ultimately need to do here is we need to solve for x. Well, there's a few things we could do. First of all, I'm going to erase this because it's going to be kind of in our way and I'm going to run out of room if I don't get rid of it. Um, but one thing we should do first is we should try to combine all of our like terms. But notice we have 3x times 0 0.05. We probably should expand this through first. So in other words, we should probably multiply these two things together. Uh, so that gives us 0.10x plus 0 0.05 times 3x We'll just multiply your numbers together. So 0 0.05 times three is 0 0.15 X equals 3.75. Uh, and now that there's not a multiplication here, we can actually combine our like terms. This is how many X's we have. This is how many X's we have here. We can combine that together. 0 0.10 plus 0 0.15 is 0 0.25 times X equals 3.75. To solve for X here now, this becomes a uh, like a one step type equation at this point. So we just need to divide both sides by 0 0.25. Uh, I'm just gonna use my calculator here real quick. If I divide by 0 0.25, you're gonna see that that gives me X equals 15. Let's go back and think about what X represents here. Notice X represents our number of dimes. So we have 15 dimes. And since uh, the number of nickels we have is three times as many as we had dimes, we just need to times this now by three. And that'll tell us 15 times three is 45 nickels. So in other words, for that $3.75, Kai has 15 dimes and 45 nickels, which actually sounds like a lot of money. Like that sounds like a lot of coins for just $3.75. Um, but if you think about it this way, if you went 45 times five cents, and then you added it to 15 times 10 cents, you're gonna find it does actually add up to only 375. So in other words, because nickels are so so low in value, uh, a lot of them really isn't gonna be a lot of money. Anyway, moving on. So the main part of today, the real meat and potatoes of today, as I'd say, uh, is a new type of linear equation that takes this form, A times in brackets, X plus B equals C. Uh, this, of course, is where your unknown, in other words, your variable, or in other words, your x, uh, is locked away inside some brackets. Now, the strategy I've been really pushing so far of reverse bed mass, so in other words, starting with your subtraction and addition and moving backwards uh, to get your x all by itself, that strategy still works here. We want to undo everything that's happening to x. So that means, of course, in reverse bed mass, you're going to be saving the brackets for last. So you'll get, a, you'll get rid of everything that is attached to this, everything that's attached to the brackets first, and I guess in this case, it'll only be the A, uh, and then you'll solve the brackets last, right? Anyway, it's way easier to see with an example. Uh, we'll probably do like a, I'll, I'll try one, and then you try the other one kind of thing. 
Um, but let's see how we go. First of all, we'll start with a nice simple one. Six times in brackets x plus four equals 54. That means we have six of this whole chunk right here. Not just six x, not just six fours. We have six x plus fours, right? Now that in total equals 54. So here's what I would do. If we've got reverse bed mass going, we can start by getting rid of any addition subtraction, which, you know, the, the addition and subtraction that we have is locked away inside the brackets. So we can't really do anything there. So we're not gonna worry about addition subtraction. Then we move on to multiplication and division. Well, we actually have six times this whole chunk here. So we should probably get rid of that six first by dividing by six on both sides. If you divide by six on both sides, it just takes away this guy right here and that'll leave us with x plus four. You don't even need the brackets anymore. I can put them if you want. x plus four equals 54 divided by six, which is nine. Now, the reason I said you don't really need your brackets anymore is when it's brackets just on its own like this, it's not like the brackets are really doing anything. So in other words, if I remove them, it doesn't change anything here now because there's nothing attached to it anymore. They definitely did matter here when there was something attached to it because that meant that six had to attach to both of these pieces. Um, but because that six is gone, it's not part of the story anymore. We can we can just deal with it like this now. Uh, anyway, long story short, we want to get that x all by itself. So how about we minus four from both sides? That's going to give us x equals nine minus four is five. Now this question's got like a different thing thrown in here. It says solve, which we've done, and also check. To check your work, you just have to plug your answer back into the original question. So for my check, and I always just title it by saying check, uh, we're just going to take x is equal to 5 and plug it back into the original equation here. So that's going to be 6 times in brackets 5 plus 4. And we want to see if that equals 54. Now, since we're not doing, uh, like, since we're not trying to solve for an x here now, since we're just checking this, that means we're evaluating it, we're going to use normal bed mass here. So bed mass forwards, right? Because we use bed mass forwards when we're evaluating a statement. We use bed mass backwards when we're trying to pick away at it and solve for a missing piece because we have to undo everything. It's like we're trying to unbury it kind of thing. Uh, so if we're using bed mass on this to solve this, we got to start with our brackets. So five plus four is nine. So we have six times nine equals 54. And I can confirm six times nine does actually equal 54. So we have 54 equals 54. And since both sides are equal to each other, that means our check was a success. So in other words, we know that we have done this correctly x is equal to five is in fact the answer. All right, um, whoop. there we go, there we go. Okay, we're good, we're good. So there's also an alternate strategy here. And some of you while you're watching this may have already thought of it. Um, if you prefer, and I actually wouldn't recommend this because it'll screw you up for later on uh, for, for the last one we'll, we'll do today. But for the, the time being, if you're wondering, yes, you can do this. If you prefer, you could also expand by multiplying the a value, that's the number that's multiplying the outside of the brackets, through the problem. So we're going to try the last question. We already know the answer, x is 5. But we're going to try the same last question again with that strategy. So here's what I mean. Instead of dividing by 6 on both sides, if you're more comfortable, when you see a 6 or any other number tacked on the outside of some brackets like this, you could just multiply it through. Hopefully you remember that from that polynomials unit we did. We can just multiply that through. There's nothing wrong with that. So that would give us 6x plus 6 times 4 is 24. So 6x plus 24 equals 54. Lo and behold, now this is actually something way more in line with the ones we've been doing. This looks like a two-step problem now uh, where we just want to get x by itself by using reverse bed mass. So we can just minus 24. And that'll give us 6x equals 54 minus 24, which is 30. And then divide by 6 on both sides. And you'll have x equals 30 divided by 6, which, of course, is 5. So either way we did it, it gave us the same, uh, the same answer. So if you're more comfortable for certain questions, double dipping this through, by all means, you can go do that. The only reason I wouldn't suggest it is because uh, the last type of linear equation we're going to look at today will involve dividing, right? And if you're dividing, uh, it doesn't always divide through, so maybe it's not the best way of thinking about it. But again, up to you. Personally, I would just divide away the six on both sides, but, you know, whatever floats your boat. All right, so we're going to do a couple more examples. Uh, these will be solve and check. Um, I'll tell you what, we'll do the first one together, and then I'll get you guys to try the second one on your own. Uh, there's decimals involved here, 
but there's, there's they're not really any different, right? You'll just need to use a calculator. That's that's the only difference here. Uh, so for this first one, two times x plus 3.2 equals 4.2. I'm gonna walk you through this one. Uh, you could double dip the two through if you wanted. Personally, I would greatly prefer just dividing by two on both sides to get rid of that there. And that's gonna leave me with x plus 3.2 equals 4.2 divided by two. If you're not comfortable doing that in your head, you can always use your calculator, but that's gonna be 2.1. Uh, and then lastly here, we want to just minus away this 3.2 from both sides to get X totally by itself. So it's totally isolated. Uh, X is going to equal, I'm going to use a calculator just so I don't screw up mental math here. Uh, 2.1 minus 3.2 is negative 1.1. Question does say you also need to check. So of course we have to take that little bit of trouble and check this. Uh, so check means plug it back into the original problem. So we want to see if two times 1.1 plus 3.2. We wanna see if that does actually equal, uh, or sorry, negative 1.1. Missed something there, yeah, sorry about that. Negative 1.1 plus 3.2. We wanna see if that actually does equal 4.2. So let's find out. Once again, when we're doing a check, we're evaluating, so we have to use normal bed mass. So start with the brackets here. Uh, that's gonna be two times negative 1.1 plus 3.2 is I believe 2.1. Uh, so we have 2 times 2.1 equals 4.2. And if you multiply these together, it does, in fact, equal 4.2. So 4.2 equals 4.2. Bingo, bango, bongo, we got it. No big deal, right? Okay, next one. You can do this one with the exact same strategy we just did. Pause the video here. You can even see the work I've done above. Pause the video here. Give this one a try and make sure you also check it. Okay, we're going to go over this one now. How I would advise going through this is divide by negative 5.3 on both sides. If you double dipped it through, by all means, you can do that. You're just gonna get like the same answer just in a different way. Um, but it, whatever, like seriously, whatever you wanna do, it works. Uh, this is gonna leave me though with X minus 2.1 equals, I definitely need to use my calculator for this, negative 22.26 divided by 5.3 or negative 5.3. That gives me positive 4.2. Because remember, a negative divided by a negative is going to be a positive. So we got positive 4.2. Lastly, here, we just need to add 2.1 to both sides. I'll write that in there just so you can see. And that's going to give me x equals uh, 6.3. Whew, right? Exhilarating. It's basically the same idea we've always done. It's just, there's a different kind of uh, step we got to do here, right? There's brackets involved. So you just got to think about that in a different way. Anyway, we got to do a check now the question asks you don't have to do a check on every single question only the ones that it asks uh to me it's it's usually just time consuming but whatever it's a good way of checking to see whether or not you got the right answer uh so negative 5.3 times uh 6.3 minus 2.1 again i'm just copying the original question down just putting in the 6.3 for my x uh we want to see if this equals negative 22.26 uh, just like before when we evaluate we have to start with brackets so this gives us negative 5.3 times 6.3 minus 2.1 is 4.2 equals negative 22.26. Uh, and lastly here, we got to multiply these two together and you will see that negative 22.26 equals negative 22.26, which is exactly what we were hoping for. So yeah, it did work. Again, the whole point of checking is just to make sure that you got the actual correct answer, okay? All right, here's some tough examples. Uh, if you're feeling really bold, if you're like, hey, you know what? I think I really get this. You can pause the video here and give these a try. But if you're not feeling too bold, don't worry about it. Pause the video, though. Give them a try if you want. Let's see where we go. OK, I'm going to go over these now. Uh, so let's start on this one because we want to get our variable. In this case, it's Q all by itself. Let's start by dividing by this negative 5 here, right? because this is on the outside of the brackets. We divide by negative five on both sides. What this is going to do is it's going to give me uh, negative 4.5 divided or 4.5 divided by negative five. Let's just see. Yeah, that's negative 0 0.9. And that equals Q minus two. Uh, and then, of course, since we want to get Q all by itself here now, we just need to add two on both sides. So if we just add two to that, you're going to see that Q is equal to one. Point one. That one wasn't so tough. There I was thinking, like I was hyping this up, saying it was a tough example. Uh, I think what was quote unquote tough about this one uh, was that the uh, the variables on the right hand side here now, not not on the left hand side. So that that can be confusing for some people. So I, I won't rag on this one too much. Um, 
but still, it's the same same idea. We just focus on whatever side the variable's on, and uh, and go from there, right? Uh, now it does say just solve. You don't have to check this one. So yay, that saves us a little bit of work. Uh, now this next one, this next one is tough. There's something really weird happening here, but let's let's focus in on what needs to be done. Notice our variable a is over here, locked away in some brackets. Let's get whatever is on the outside of that bracket away. So let's divide both sides by 2.1. So 12.81, oops, 12.81 divided by 2.1. This is going to give me 6.1 equals, and since the brackets are all by themselves now, you're not really doing anything. So we got 4.1 minus A. Okay, here's what's weird. Usually we say we want to get our A all by itself, or our X, or our Q, or whatever other variable we're working with. Um, but we got a bit of an issue here. This is 4.1 minus A. You could worry about getting rid of this 4.1. Technically, it's a positive 4.1. So to get rid of this 4.1, you could minus 4.1 from both sides. Let me show you what happens if you do that. But keep in mind, the reason we have to minus 4.1 on both sides and not add 4.1 is because this is a positive 4.1. If there was a negative sign in front of here, then you would have had to add 4.1. But since, since this is a positive 4.1, let's minus 4.1 from both sides. 6.1 minus 4.1 is just going to be 2. So 2 equals, this minus still needs to linger, so 2 equals minus A. That's not what we're looking for, though. We want to solve for what A is, not what minus A is. Well, here's the trick. Since this is minus A, you can do one of two things. The first thing, the thing I would recommend you do, is since this is minus A, you can actually divide both sides by negative 1. Negative A divided by negative 1 turns it into positive A. 2 divided by negative 1 turns it into negative 2. So A is equal to negative 2 is going to be our answer. The alternative thing you could do here, we'll go back to it, 2 equals negative A or minus A, uh, is you could add A on both sides. So now we have 2 plus A equals negative A plus A is just 0. There's nothing left there. Uh, and then we just got to think, okay, now let's get our, our A all by itself. So let's minus 2 from both sides. And that gives us A equals negative 2. Either way you do it, gave you, gave you the exact same thing, right? A is equal to negative 2 on both of these. Okay, that one was trickier though. Some of them every now and then will pop up like that. Uh, definitely don't shy away from those. Give those a try and check your answer in the back. It just takes a little bit of practice that those think logically about what needs to be moved away. All right, we just have... Uh, a new type of, uh, of linear equation to introduce here now. I know we're already like 23 minutes into this. I apologize, but don't worry, we're almost done. Uh, the last new type of linear equation that we're going to introduce, at least for today, is x plus b over a equals c. Uh, what I want to tell you is when you have something, like a whole big thing, more than one term in a numerator, like x plus b, that's more than one term, it's two terms actually, in a numerator, or even in a denominator if you had it, but we'll, we'll just worry about numerators for today. If you have a whole big thing in a numerator, you can actually consider that entire piece to be in brackets of its own. Okay, that actually might make things a little bit easier. If that is thought as being in brackets of its own, you can just deal with it that way, right? And you can think, okay, that's when I use reverse bed mass, that's the last thing I deal with. Uh, so again, that concept of undoing whatever's happening to x still applies. So if we think of this in brackets, that basically means save this for last, get rid of everything else that's happening to the side. So in other words, get rid of this divide by a, uh, and go from there. Let's see a few examples. I think it's way, way easier to understand when you see some examples. So we'll start with this one. X plus 3 all over 6 equals 2. Like I just said, it's easier to think of a numerator when it's more than one piece as if it's in brackets. So if we're using reverse bed mass, that means we have to save the brackets for last. Okay, so anything else that is happening to the side where the variable is needs to be gotten rid of first, except for whatever's in the brackets. Well, the only other thing, except for the brackets, of course, that is uh, affecting x on this side of the equation is this divide by 6. So let's get rid of that by timesing by 6 on both sides. This will leave us with just x plus 3 equals 2 times 6, which is 12. Next up, of course, this becomes a much simpler linear equation to solve. We just need a minus 3 on both sides. x is going to equal 12 minus 3. That's 9. Now, the question didn't say for us to check, but if you wanted to, you could always throw 9 back into the original thing. 9 plus 3 is 12 on the top. 12 divided by 6. It's pretty clear it's 2. You can just check it in your mind. Uh, it's not, not too bad. 
Next one, on the other hand, this one is a little bit beefier. Uh, I would actually really appreciate uh, if, if you're feeling bold enough, pause the video here, see if you can try this one and see if you can get this right without even me showing you. So pause here, see if you can do it. All right, I'm gonna go over it. If you weren't able to get it or if you weren't, if you weren't feeling bold enough, I don't blame you, don't worry. Uh, first things first, let's imagine this whole thing on the numerator where our x is as being in brackets. I would start by multiplying by three on both sides. If you multiply by three, you're gonna be left with x minus two equals two over five times three, which is pretty much the same thing as saying times three over one. To multiply a fraction, you just multiply straight across. Um, so in other words, this is gonna be x minus two equals six over five. And then of course, to get x by itself, we just have to add two to both sides. But that's where something funny happens yet again. We now have x equals six over five plus two, which is probably better thought as being six over five plus two over one. Remember, when you add or subtract fractions together, you can only do that if they have a common denominator. So between six over five and two over one, I think a good common denominator would be five. This one can stay the same, but this guy needs to be multiplied by five on the top and the bottom, right? We do the top and the bottom to keep it the same. So this gives us x equals six over five plus instead of two over one, multiply the top and the bottom by five, you have 10 over five. Keep in mind, 10 divided by five is the same thing as two. So that's why it's there, it's the same thing. Uh, and now that they have the same denominator, you can just add the numerators together. So we have x equals six plus 10 is 16 over five. And I would just leave your answer as a fraction if need be. Uh, I would never switch it into a decimal. If you were given fractions in the first place, it's probably best to have a fraction as an answer. Uh, always check to simplify it though, but 16 over five does not simplify. So we're good to go. We don't even have to worry about this one. All right, I think this is the last slide. I don't wanna eat my words though, let me just check. Yes, it is the last slide, awesome. Okay, the last slide, home run guys, home run, here we go. Um, these ones are much more challenging questions. Uh, I'm going to show you how to do them because there are some questions in the practice questions you'll work on in a minute or two here uh, that you will need to know this for. Uh, just again, focus on where your X is. So in this question, I see I have two minus X up here. I'm gonna put brackets around that because that's what I wanna focus on. Let's get rid of this divide by negative four first. So to do that, we just need to times by negative four on both sides. That gives me two minus X equals one over seven times negative four is like saying times negative four over one. So that becomes negative four, one times negative four is negative four over seven times one, which is seven. Now, the next up, uh, you have a couple different things you could do. Remember we have two minus X here. This is kind of like one we did a few minutes ago. Uh, this minus X is just uncomfortable. Personally though, I'm gonna like kind of just bear with it for now. I'm gonna minus two from both sides because this is a positive two here. So I gotta do the opposite of that. Let's minus two from both sides. And this is going to give me negative X, this minus sign's not going anywhere. So minus X equals negative four over seven minus two. Once again though, remember when you are uh, adding or subtracting fractions, they have to have a common denominator. So since this is technically minus two over one, we need to change it to something over seven. So this will be negative X equals negative four over seven minus, to turn this into something over seven times the top and the bottom by seven. So this is minus 14 over seven. Okay, so next up, since they have a, a same denominator, we can just subtract the numerators. Negative four minus 14 is negative 18. So this gives us negative X equals negative 18 over seven. And then the last thing here is because there's a negative in front of the X, let's just divide by negative one on both sides. Uh, we don't worry about keep change flip here. Just basically think of it this way. If you divide by negative one, it's gonna flip the sign on the other one. So this is no longer negative X equals negative 18 over seven. We'll just cancel those negatives out and it becomes X equals positive 18 over seven. And that fraction does not simplify any further. So we're good to go there. Last one here, I think this one's actually a little easier than the last one. Thank goodness, because that last one, that, that, okay, keep in mind, this last one is 18 over seven one, that is about as hard as it get, right? Um, but this last one here, hopefully a little bit simpler. Again, we wanna get our variable by itself. So notice M plus four is where our vari variable is up here. Uh, so let's start by multiplying by five to get rid of this divide by five here. If we multiply by five on both sides, that's like multiplying by five over one, keep that in mind. That's gonna be 15 over two equals m plus four. 
And then of course, to get m by itself, we now need to minus four from both sides. So this is going to give us 15 over two minus four equals m. Once again, though, to add or subtract fractions together, they need to have a common denominator. Since this four is technically four over one, we got to change it into something over two. Well, to do that, we just need to multiply the top and the bottom by two. So this becomes 15 over two minus eight over two. That's the same thing as four over one. That equals m. Last step here, minus these two together, 15 minus eight is seven. So we have seven over two equals m. And that fraction does not simplify. So that is good to go. We are all done there. Whew, okay, so sorry for such a long lesson, guys. I was not expecting it to take that long. We're already like 31 minutes in. For practice, I want you guys trying page 320, questions four to 11. Get as far through that as you can. Remember, I am in the Zoom meeting if you need me. Um, and also remember, make sure you are signing out at the end of each lesson. Anyway, if you need help, you know where to contact me. Best of luck.